Hi guys! If you're an owner of a Novation launch key, you may be interested in adding a special undocumented feature. For me, I wanted to play a virus TI rack with a MIDI controller. Unfortunately, the launch key doesn't have a MIDI DIN output, so I'm going to show you how you can add one. Needless to say, doing any of this will void your warranty. Novation or I cannot be responsible for any damage done to your launch key. Firstly, to perform this operation, you'll need a soldering iron, some solder, some thin wire, a screwdriver, a drill if you have one, a hot glue gun is handy too. You'll also need to buy a MIDI DIN socket, a in-channel MOSFET, and two 20 ohm resistors. Once the modification is complete, you'll also need to update the launch key firmware to a custom version. This modification will work on the 25, 49 and 61 key versions of the launch key. First of all, build this circuit. It can be put on a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard or Vero board. It should have 6 wires coming out of it. 3 of them will connect to the MIDI DIN and the other three will go to the launch key main board. Step one, take off the screws of the launch key back panel. You don't need to take them all off and it's a good idea to remember which, which screws go into which hole because some screws are longer than the others. Once the back cover is off, take off the four screws holding down the main board. Remove the ribbon cables connected to it. Now, step two, build the MOSFET and resistor circuit. Watch carefully as to where things need to be soldered. You see this big capacitor here? The left leg with the shaded area is ground, and the, or the ground is sometimes known as the arrow connection. This also needs to connect to pin two of the MIDI DIN port. The right leg of the capacitor is plus five volts which needs to connect to the 220 ohm resistor and also to the gate of the MOSFET. The other end of that same 220 ohm resistor connects to pin 4 of the MIDI DIN. Locate the MIDI output from the chip. To find it, find the resistor labelled R10 on the main board. Solder a connection at the join between the chip and R10. You'll have to solder it at the leg of R10 closest to the chip because you won't be able to solder on the track. The output of the MOSFET transistor, otherwise known as the drain, should connect to pin 5 of the MIDI DIN. Make sure that your wires are long enough because you'll need to mount the DIN connector a bit further away from the main board, so make sure you leave yourself plenty of room and extra wires. Step 3. Now that you've made the connections, it's a good idea to use some hot glue to fix down the connections as you don't want them to break. Drill a hole on the chassis and file it out so that the hole is big enough to accommodate the MIDI DIN connector. If you don't have a drill available, you can push the hot soldering iron through the chassis. The plastic should melt, but be sure to do this in a well ventilated area because the plastic fumes aren't very nice to breathe. I use the glue gun to fix the MIDI DIN port. This is step 4. You may use the screws or whatever you have on hand. The mounting needs to be strong enough to withstand plugging in and out a MIDI DIN cable. Sometimes it can be quite stiff and require a bit of force. Step 5. Screw the unit back together and make sure all the ribbon cables are fitted. Step 6. Update the firmware and use a version which has the MIDI output activated. You can find these in the link below. Make sure that you use the correct version of firmware on your device. Step 7. You're done and your launch key now has a MIDI output which you can use to connect to external gear. This way you can power your launch key off a DC power supply or a USB hub in a standalone manner without the need for a PC or an iPad. Good luck and if you have any queries feel free to message me and let me know how you get on.